What's going on YouTube family? This is your man Pristine back with another video. Welcome to the full unboxing first initial thoughts and impressions for the new Google Pixel 6a. Now initially I uh, ordered this thing, uh, I pre-ordered it actually. As you can see I've got my Pixel Buds A here which I think is a nice touch. You know you get those for free with the pre-order. Um, I went last Thursday to uh, my local Best Buy to pick up my device uh, and only to find out that it did not come <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, and so it got to me uh, a whole week later. So here it is, you know, Thursday, uh, August 4th, which is actually a week from, you know, the actual release date, which is why I'm a little late, you know, with this unboxing. Um, but, you know, better late to the party than never. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> first off, uh, this thing costs four forty nine ninety nine, and I think that that's a pretty reasonable price, you know, considering everything that you're getting. You know, I know that there's been some takeaways, you know, in order for it to, you know, have that cheaper price tag. You know, there's obviously some compromises. Um, you know, there's going to be certain things that you're going to get, um, or rather, that you're not going to get. You know with the pixel 6 and the 6 pro that's not going to be here on the a because they had to justify you know the cheaper price tag by taking away a few things but the question is are the things that have been taken away that big of a deal to you um me personally i think that this phone is a good value um and i think that you're definitely getting a lot of bang for your buck uh so you know 449 is going to get you an awful lot so you know stick with me and i'm going to tell you what that all entails so first off as it pertains to the display we've got a 6.1 inch 1080p by 2400 pixel hdr oled display okay we've got a screen to body ratio of 83 percent we've got a 20 by 9 aspect ratio we got a 429 ppi pixel density we've got corning gorilla glass 3 on the front, we do have a plastic back with, a, with an aluminum frame. Um, we do have a nano SIM or eSIM technology with the Pixel 6a here. Um, now the internal specifications, the guts, we've got the Google Tensor 5 nanometer 5G chipset, which is the same flagship chipset that you're going to find in the Google 6, uh, the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro. We've got an octa-core CPU, we've got a Mali G78 mp20 gpu we got six gigs of ram we got 128 gigabytes of storage which is non-expandable and we're running android 12. as you know i mean this is going to be uh, uh the 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 cleanest purest form of stock android on a pixel device um so that's what you're getting fresh out of the box now the cameras <clears throat> We've got, you know, some tried and true cameras. You know, these are not new cameras. You know, these are cameras that have been on, you know, previous Pixel devices. But, you know, these are, you know, some top tier, top performing cameras. I mean, so if you're looking at the camera tech and, you know, the specs aren't quite adding up with what you're going to see on the Pixel 6 or the 6 Pro, do not fret because these are the same cameras that have been in previous Pixels that have just mesmerized and blown people away with their actual quality. Okay, now we've got a 12.2 megapixel uh, f.17 f1.7 aperture 27 millimeter wide lens featuring dual pixel PDAF and optical image stabilization. And then we have another 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture 17 millimeter uh, 114 degree wide lens. So you get 114 degree field of view. This is also featuring dual LED flash, pixel shift, auto HDR, panorama. We do have 4K recording at 30 or 60 FPS. We've got 1080p recording at 30, 60, 120, and 240 FPS with gyro electronic image stabilization and optical image stabilization. Now on the front of the device, we've got an eight megapixel camera. This is an F 2.0 aperture, 24 millimeter wide lens featuring auto HDR, panorama, no 4k recording on the front camera that's not really a big deal to me we just have 1080p at 30 frames per second some people may scoff at that 
to me, that's not really a big deal. All right, now battery life, we have a 4,410 milliamp hour non-removable battery. This is USB type C, obviously running USB power delivery 3.0. We do have fast 18 watt charging. There is no wireless charging. I mean, so there's that's, that's gonna be one of those compromises there. You know, if you like the wireless charging feature, you're not gonna find that here on the Pixel 6a. Um, but you will find those features or that particular feature on the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro. I mean, to me, wireless charging is not a big deal. I mean, I understand the argument if it's you if you've gotten used to using a wireless charger and you have the uh, the convenience of just laying your device on, you know, on a, on a charging pad <clears throat> and you're still able to, you know, utilize it in different ways or whatnot, um, then by all means do that. But, you know, I, I feel as though you know, plugging it into the wall charger um, has gotten so advanced as far as the charging speeds that wireless charging just, you know, I don't even think twice about it. I mean, I've got a couple of wireless chargers. I barely use them. I actually just use them, you know, for, for stands for my phones, to be honest with you, um, you know, because the charging has gotten so fast with these charging brakes. Um, now, Additional features, we've got Bluetooth 5.2. We do have NFC. We've got, un we've got an optical under the display fingerprint scanner. We've got dual stereo speakers. We do have IP67 water and dust resistance. This device is offering subject of uh, sub, sub 6 5G. This is the fully unlocked variant. I mean, so this is unlocked for any carrier. You know, I got this from my local Best Buy. I'll drop the link in the description if you wanna go ahead and pick yourself up one from Best Buy. But this phone is also being sold in pretty much every carrier, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, US Cellular, you know, and all the other major players that are out there. Um, and so I believe that you can get, you know, a Pixel 6a with sub six uh, and or millimeter wave. But this variant right here, I actually don't quote me on that. I'm not exactly sure about that, but I know that this is offering sub six 5G. OK, we do have always on display. Um, among many other features that this phone houses that, you know, we know and loved from the Pixel 6s and the 6 Pro. Now, the dimensions of the device, you know, it's 178 grams, 8.9 uh, millimeters in thickness, uh, 6.28 ounces, and the colors are chalk, which is what this is. I'm just like, Google just need to quit fronting, yo, and just go ahead and that, that's that cocaine, man. <laughs> that cocaine white you know what i'm saying so we got cocaine white here you know google is calling it chalk so i guess we'll just ride with that for now we got charcoal which is like a real dark gray it looks kind of blackish gray um and then we have sage which is just that real light green color um so that's pretty much it ladies and gentlemen as far as the spec list for the pixel 6a again we do have the uh, Pixel Buds, the A series here. I mean, th this was a nice touch to add these in. You know, this was a pre-order um, promotion that they had going on. I'm gonna try these out, but um, I personally am not a fan of earbuds like this um, because I can't. I can never seem to get a comfortable fit with sticking things into my ear, and I don't like to plug my ear up you know, just to have a bud in it. I'm more of like an AirPod person, just kind of like how the Air, and not the AirPod Pros, but I have like the, you know, the, the second gen AirPods and then the newer third gen ones that look kind of like the AirPod Pros. I like the way that those just kind of sit in the earlobe without you having to put it all the way in your ear, plugging up your ear, and then having to rely on like, you know, pass through, you know, that's kind of like my Galaxy Buds and things just sound super weird. It's still hard to hear outside noises. I, I just, I don't like them. So I will give these a try just to see if I can get a more comfortable fit. Um, but if not, I don't know, maybe I'll do like a giveaway or something, you know, for these guys right here. Um, uh, Cause I'm just not into jamming things all the way down into my ear. Um, but I thought it was a nice touch that you get those for free. You know, with the pre-order, I mean, you know, this is a hundred dollar value. I mean, if you go buy these in store right now, you're paying ninety nine ninety nine plus tax. So it's good that Google threw those in just to kind of incentivize, you know, the Pixel 6a here a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, so as you can see by the looks of this box, I mean, this is a very tiny box here. And um, 
you know we're living in that day and age now ladies and gentlemen where you are only getting uh, a box with the phone um, and some literature and that's pretty much it you know what I'm saying I mean you know I think there's they're still putting you know the charging cable in the box but just not the brick and so obviously you know we've got the pixel 6a on the front of the box um, the color that you see on the box is going to be the color that is inside the box um, to the right of the box we've got Google pixel 6a at the top we got the Google logo Google logo IEMI serial number all that type of stuff um, and then we've just got some general information here about the device and stuff that I've already covered and read off um, and I do like the fact that Google simplifies this process for us so rather than fighting with some hard plastic or something like that we just hit those and boom and as you can see immediately we are greeted with our Google Pixel 6a and you see there USB type C there's our fingerprint sensor right there there's our sim tray right there volume rocker up and down and then there is the power button right there Go ahead and peel that off and wow this really feels good in the hand and as I mentioned I mean this you know the back is plastic we've got Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front but there's nothing that feels cheap about this device I mean it feels very premium in the hand um, and you know another thing that I really really like about this device as well is you know just the form factor like it's it's a 6.1 inch display which you know by today's standards I mean some may say that that's pretty small but you gotta you gotta remember the the the, the pixel 6 and the pixel 6 pro are big phones right and this is smaller than both of them and so to me you know just being in my local best buy and holding you know they have like a pixel section and they got the 6a the 6 and the 6 pro and uh you know just comparing them all side by side i mean as far as just like you know form factor and how this feels in comparison to the 6 and the 6 pro to me this is the sweet spot like this is a really 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 nice you know i don't know i mean 6.1 inches i mean that's still a larger display but you know most phones these days are anywhere from 6.5 and above i mean so this is this is the sweet spot right here i mean this is nice it's compact feeling it's still going to offer you you know a, a big screen you know to enjoy you know your content your multimedia um and so forth and there you go right there so as the phone is booting up I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of the inbox contents. And so you see we do here have the charging wire that would go to an adapter. And then we have the USB-A to Type-C to transfer all your data from your old device to your new Pixel 6a. And then we've got the Pixel 6a Google Tensor. On the back of that box, we got the SIM pin. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is our literature and things, Google. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all that we got in the box, ladies and gents. Okay. So we'll go ahead and file those things to the side. And here is our Pixel 6a. And again, as I mentioned, you got 6.1 inches corner to corner. We'll just do just a quick hardware tour. Um, you know, before I peeled off the plastic, you know, it showed just where the SIM tray was, the volume rockers, the power. Um, so you know that those buttons are all gonna be on the right side of the device interestingly enough we don't have the uh the neon colored power button you know so i i thought that that's kind of uh interesting now i can tell i know some of you may be asking well you know certain things that pixel is known for like the haptic response like the haptic feedback is is amazing on pixel devices and you guys see the little animation bouncing 
every time it bounces like boom boom the vibration in my hand and the way that it feels is it's like yo google they didn't skimp out on the haptic feedback motor you know uh or the haptic engine in this device just because it's more of the mid-range offering right um and that that ladies and gentlemen is a is a major plus because the haptic engine in this device is great it feels magnificent in the hand when it vibrates uh upon key presses when you're texting you know if you like to have like a little haptic feedback you know when you're you know typing and texting the way that it feels is superb i mean you know when the phone rings when it vibrates it's a nice strong vibration i mean it's nothing really cheap feeling at all and so i like the fact that google implemented that same haptic engine seemingly uh, uh I, I believe that it's the same haptic engine or if it's different from the six and the six pro then it's still a really good one because the way this phone is vibrating now i mean it feels really really good um to the top of the device we have an antenna line here another one right there and then we've got a little noise canceling microphone right there if you guys can see that in the glare to the left of the device we've got another antenna line there here is our sim tray which i've already confirmed bottom of the device we have got our type c port another noise canceling microphone right there and then there's our bottom firing speaker and i believe we have another speaker up top right above the camera if you guys can kind of see that little slit right there in the glare okay and then to the back again that's going to reveal you know that 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 uh that cocaine white color scheme you know along with um the black camera cutout i like the fact too that the the, the camera cutout you know the design if you look The camera cutout it doesn't protrude as as aggressively as it does on the pixel 6 and the pix and the 6 pro and I, i'm a i'm a big fan of that now that you know again these are not the same sensors um the same cameras and they're housed a little differently within the little casing right there but i like the fact that google decided to maintain the look of the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro on the 6a. I think that Apple could, could, could take a lot of notes from this, right? Because they continue to give um, uh, the SE in that iPhone 6, you know, body style, you know, just to continue to offer um, Touch ID. And, you know, there's other ways in which they can implement Touch ID, but given more updated design on that particular device. Um, so I think that, you know, Google, you know, has hit it out of the park with the new design, you know, especially, you know, looking at this versus, you know, um, uh, the Pixel 5a, which I just completely slammed because it didn't really seem to be too much of a difference from the pixel 4a and the, and the pixel 4a was a was a phenomenal device don't get me wrong i mean it was a beast of a device it was small it was compact it felt really good in the hand like i love the material um but it, it just you know the next iteration was the same thing with barely any spec bumps and so I, it was hard for me to respect that. And, and I think that, you know, it was a good phone, but I, I trashed it and I, uh, not in the sense that it wasn't a good phone, but I trashed the design language because it was the exact same. And I'm just like, okay, as the time goes on and things are evolving, it's like, you know, give us, give us something new, give us something to get excited about. And I think that, you know, the difference in design between the Pixel 5a versus the 6a here, this this is a really nice touch the fact that google decided to keep this design language for the 6a on par with the 6 and the 6 pro and obviously they're keeping this this, this same design language for the sevens as well that's going to be coming up later on this year so um yeah you know I'm, I'm a fan of it i mean this has a really really distinct look i mean there's no question you know you can see this from afar and you know that it's a pixel because there's no other device that looks like this right and so i'm i'm a big fan of that you know huge fan of that so uh yeah ladies and gents um hold tight i'm gonna go ahead and dig into this thing you know 
um, you know, plug in my information and get to the desktop. And then, you know, we'll be right back to talk a little bit about the software features and functions and, uh, you know, maybe take a couple camera samples and then we'll go ahead and get up out of here and close this thing on out. All right. All right. Hang tight. All right, YouTube family, we are back in at the desktop for the Google Pixel 6a. Um, and, you know, after, you know, getting things set up a little bit, playing around with the device, I mean, this, this is a pretty good bang for your buck at $449.99. I mean, you're getting the new design, you're getting the Tensor chip, um, which is, you know, the flagship chipset. Um, and, you know, <laughs> Although there is certain things that are missing that you're going to find on the 6 or the 6 Pro, I personally feel like, you know, what the 6A is offering is going to be more than sufficient enough for the average consumer. I mean, this the, the, the build is just, I mean, the more I hold this phone, I mean, it feels really good in the hand. I mean, the haptic engine is amazing. Um, now, I didn't bother downloading all of my applications. Um, so this is just what the phone is going to look like fresh out of the box and speaking of fresh out of the box there was an update waiting for me so there was a security patch um, and some stability fixes and whatnot and so that's always good um, I know that typically Google normally puts updates out to more toward the beginning of a month um, and so you know it's it's good to see that this device is getting some TLC in that particular regard um, we do not have you know a higher refresh rate this is a 60 hertz refresh rate but you know it's not it it's not it's not bad right it's not bad at all now this again this is a stock android experience there's no bloatware again this is the fully unlocked variant from my local best buy i mean so i didn't get this from a carrier so there's no carrier branded applications that are pre-installed on the device i mean so you have literally nothing but the google suite on the device um, if I pop down here into settings if we look at storage uh, just saw storage there it is so it's like we've got 15% of the memory used out of the 128 we've got a hundred and nine gigabytes free and that's what that says there so 19 gigabytes used out of the 128 that's all the pre-installed applications and so you know i hope that at some point ladies and gentlemen we will see a day where these manufacturers and oems will actually promote uh the exact amount of uh a gigabyte storage space you know rather than saying 128 and again misleading people into believing that that's what they really have not mentioning that the pre-installed applications are going to take from that 128 gigs and so um we are again left with 109 gigs uh again we do not have memory expansion now for someone like me i mean i i'll be content you know with the 64 gig device i would probably be content with a 32 gigabyte device because i just don't do a lot of downloading and stuff onto my device heavy files and all that sort of thing you know so i'm pretty i'm pretty mild as it pertains to those things. Now, if we pop into about phone, again, the device name, Google Pixel 6a. Um, again, there's Android 12, if you're looking for your confirmation for that. Um, now the security patch, April 5th, 2022. Um, again, as you see right there, Android 12, which is the version that we are running. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much what I really wanted to show you as far as the, uh, the, the, the storage. I mean, so that you had a good idea of the amount of storage that you're gonna get fresh out of the box. Now, you know, if you want those higher gigabyte uh, packages, then you're gonna have to settle for, you know, the Pixel 6 or the 6 Pro. I believe that they those are offering, you know, higher gigabyte uh, storage capacity. Um, but um yeah now you know i hear a lot about this fingerprint sensor i i had both of the uh the the pixel 6 and the pixel 6 pro and i know that the fingerprint sensor it 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 was it had some challenging moments okay 
And, you know, I think that it got a little better as time went on, as Google continued to update those devices. Um, we don't have face, facial recognition here, which, you know, to me is not, you know, it's not really a big deal. I mean, you know, some people may want that, but that's another one of the things that's not on here. It wasn't on the Pixel 6 or the 6 Pro as well. So, I mean, maybe Google is working hard to implement that on the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. We'll see, because I know that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, but the fingerprint sensor, again, you you got to make sure that your, your thumb is placed correctly and... You know, you place it on it and it takes maybe a second and a half, maybe two seconds at the most. Double tap the screen and boom, it opens up and it works 100% of the time as I just displayed, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, never mind what you've heard. I mean, the best thing to do is just get these devices in your hand and try them for yourself. I mean, you know, some people have been slamming the fingerprint sensor on this device. Again, you got to realize that this device does have that Titan uh, M2 chip you know, which is one of the highest forms of security on a device. And so quite naturally, you know, for a phone that's known for its security, um, it, you're probably not going to get one of those fingerprint sensors where you can just barely tap it and it's unlocking your phone because it's trying to secure things. And, you know, I personally do not mind that. Um, I like the peace of mind and comfort in knowing that nobody's going to come behind me and you know try to get into my phone because i've got a little sensitive fugazi little fingerprint sensor and i like to know too that it's going to actually take a second or two to actually scan my thumbprint to ensure that it is accurate which is the only way that can access my device so you know people can say what they want about this fingerprint sensor but as i'm displaying i mean it works a hundred percent of the time. I mean, you just got to make sure that, you know, your, you know, proper finger placement, set it where it needs to be set, let it do its thing. You know, again, that haptic motor is amazing. I cannot talk enough about the haptic engine in this phone. You know, as soon as you place your thumb on the fingerprint sensor, it's going to vibrate. And as soon as the phone unlocks, it's going to vibrate again. Um, and I, you know, I've had some really cheap, feeling haptic engines in a lot of flagships that cost hundreds more than this device and so um you know uh, uh, along with the 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 the, the 6.1 inches the ergonomic feel this being a little bit smaller than the pixel 6 and the pixel 6 pro which i think is the sweet spot like i actually would prefer this particular form factor over both the pixel 6 and the pixel 6 pro because they're bigger and they can be you know sometimes a little heavy feel a little bit cumbersome but this right here i mean this this is definitely the sweet spot so you got that 6.1 inch display oled panel 1080p doesn't have to be anything higher than that i mean the screen looks absolutely amazing you can see again it's an oled panel so we got those real deep blacks very vibrant color whites reds blues i mean yeah i mean in the 60 hertz i mean it's not it's not it's not a problem like people would think i mean you know you're going to notice that things are going to be a little bit choppy you know and and mostly all of my devices that i've got you know which is a lot of them <laughs> they all have higher refresh rates you know all the way up from 90 hertz uh, or from uh, 90 hertz on up to like 144 hertz um and so i'm used to you know have you know wielding devices that do have that higher refresh rate but this 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 isn't as bad as what people make it seem like and then you know go down to your local best buy to the pixel section where they have all three of the devices they've got the pixel 6a next to the pixel 6 and the pixel 6 pro and you can just kind of you know navigate all three of those devices at the same time and you will see that you know the, the 60 hertz it's, it's just as responsive it's just the animations aren't as smooth because it's not higher it's not running at that higher refresh rate right but this is going to be more than suitable you know i mean for your needs i mean i i sometimes wonder too you know people outside of the uh tech community and creators like you know it's our responsibility to scrutinize these devices and talk about every little thing right every little nook and cranny about the device but my question is does the average consumer actually care about higher refresh rates is that is that is that really a desired feature like i know for me like it's just one of those things where once i've ex been exposed to it then it's hard to 
to, to not want it. Um, and, and I think that's the main thing that just makes going back to a 60 hertz display uh, somewhat painful, you know, because you're used to those silky smooth animations, but this is totally doable. I mean, I, if uh, I'm gonna throw my main SIM card in here and I'm gonna use this thing just so that I can curate my full pristine review for you guys, but I, I can already tell that I'm not gonna have a problem you know with this device at all as far as like the animations the 60 hertz like it's not a bother at all whatsoever um so you know if that's something that you desire i mean if that's a determining factor for you then definitely you want to step up to the pixel sits which i believe is like a just shy of maybe maybe about a hundred hundred dollars more um uh, or, you know, if you want to go all balls out, you know, then you can just go ahead and get the uh, the Pixel 6 Pro, which I believe, if I remember correctly, has 120 hertz refresh rate. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it performs, I mean, this is a Pixel through and through. And you got that Tensor chip, you know, which is a flagship processor, I mean, so... You know a lot of bang for your buck you know again i can see the people that spent top dollar myself included for the pixel 6 for the pixel 6 pro when it came out you know one of those things that you're paying for is that tensor chip and so it is kind of a blow to the people that have already spent you know top dollar on the 6 and 6 pro only to come out later on with a variant that has the same processor for a much cheaper cost like that you know we we see that with apple you know with the with the se series um but you know I, I i can i can give it a pass you know because you got the new design i mean you know you got top-notch cameras you know and just performance all around i mean i mean like i said this is a pixel through and through this is just like a miniature pixel 6 or 6 pro you know just without you know uh, uh, uh the high refresh rate without wireless charging you know without you know the cameras that you find on the 606 pro but these cameras that are tried and true that have been in several other pixels prior to this one i mean one shouldn't look as though that's like a major drop off in the camera department because google has shown and proved that for years they had these same cameras and other pixel devices and you know through ai and and, and machine learning i mean those uh, these cameras were able to capture amazing photos right i mean so one shouldn't even look at you know the difference in camera tech you know as you know this being a, like a significant drop off from what the six and the six pro was offering right i mean so you know um yeah so real quick we'll just pop into the settings and you know you're just going to find your 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 normal you know uh stock android you know shenanigans uh, network and internet connection devices and it's going to tell you what all these things are entailed i mean you know with the pixels things are grouped together a little differently than may they than, than when they may be grouped in other devices um but yeah you got network and internet um connecting devices apps and notifications battery storage sound and vibrations now if i click on sound and vibrations there's one thing that is a little bit of a turnoff i've gotten used to having the ability to cut to 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 toggle the volume for both uh, 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 the, my ringtone and my notification tone. And so I'm not really a big fan of the fact that here it is, it's consolidated, it's ring and notification tone. I'm not really a big fan of that because what if I just want to adjust my ringtone? What if I want to increase it or decrease it, but I want my notification tone to stay the same? It doesn't give us that option and so i'm not really a big fan of that i'm not trying to nitpick but i mean you know those are things that you know are offered on other devices and i've actually gotten kind of spoiled by them and um yeah you know that just would have been a nice touch to be able to individually toggle my ringtone volume and my notification tone i mean is that a total deal breaker no but i just would have liked to have seen that feature you know under uh the sound and vibration uh this is also where you're going to go to be able to toggle you know your haptic engine um you know you got vibration and haptics you know use vibration and haptics you turn that on then it's you know vibrate for calls you can choose always vibrate never vibrate or vibrate first then ring gradually I always just have it on always vibrate um and then you can you can uh, uh increase the vibration intensity you know, for your ringtone, your notification tone, and touch feedback, just like when you're touching the device, when you're texting, all that kind of thing. 
Um, so I think that that's a nice touch, you know, giving us some customizability there. Um, that's that's never a, a bad thing at all whatsoever. Um, I just would have liked to have seen, you know, the, 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 the option to toggle the volume and the notification tones separately. That would have been nice. Maybe we'll see that in the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, who knows, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll drop down to, oh, we'll go down to display. And, oh, I thought I had my brightness level at 50. There we go, brightness at 50. That's where I keep my brightness level. So, you know, that helps optimize battery. I turn off adaptive bright. Whoa, I thought I turned that off. Turn that off, okay. Yeah, I keep my adaptive brightness off. I keep my screen brightness at 50. Helps conserve a little battery life. You know, if the screen is not just running at maximum brightness all the time, which I believe is 800 nits, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, you know, screen lock, screen timeout, dark theme, font size, uh, display size, night light, colors. Now, when we go to colors, uh, we've got natural boosted and adaptive. And by default, it is on adaptive. And I'm going to leave it there because typically adaptive kind of oversaturates colors, makes things pop, makes them a little sharper, a little detailed in my, a little more detailed in my personal opinion. I like it. I like the way that it looks. I mean, so I'm going to keep it there. But you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up on the screen, but there's a slight change when you hit boosted. And then natural is just going to give you that more natural look and it's going to give you some examples of what that looks like so unnatural which that looks good boosted added a little bit of sharpness and then adaptive it just you know it, it adds more color pop i mean it adds more sharpness and detail um so i'm just going to keep it on adaptive you know that's how i would like to look it look at it doesn't look like we have the ability to change the RGB, um, which, you know, it's not a big deal to me, but I know that some of these devices, you know, under the display settings and, you know, colors, you know, you'll have that option, but that apparently is not an option here on the Pixel 6a. All right, wallpaper and styles. This is where you're gonna go if you wanna completely change the style of your device the way it looks now. We do have another cool feature that I really liked on the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro was that when you chose a wallpaper, basically, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the UI would just, it would create like a whole color scheme for the wallpaper that you selected for your, for your device. And, you know, this does, you know, the, the same thing. You got themed icons, which is in beta mode. I mean, but you still can utilize that to make your icons the same color as the wallpaper that you got. You got some cool customizable features here on the Pixel 6a. We found those same things on the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. So it's nice to see them make their way here. Okay, so that's under wallpaper and style. Um, under accessibility, <clears throat> we've got talk back, talk and display extra dim, dark mode, magnification, select to speak, accessibility menu, voice access, switch access, timing controls, system controls, vibration and haptics. <coughs> Excuse me, my apologies. It's like 1.26 in the morning, y'all, so bear with me. My eyes are getting a little heavy, but I am committed to finishing this first initial thoughts and impressions. A video for you guys and that's just a reviewer life man I gotta make these videos whenever I can uh, have a quiet house so you know the wife and the kids and the kitten are asleep um, yeah have to get it in real quick before I turn in um, so yeah live caption live transcribe caption preference real-time text RTT sound amplifier sound notification audio adjustment, accessibility shortcuts, text-to-speech output. And so, you know, if you are someone uh, that needs to take advantage of, uh, of any of these accessibility features, this is, uh, this is what the Pixel 6a is offering. And I believe you're gonna find these same uh, 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 feature sets under the accessibility menu on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. If not, you know, those being 
the little more premium devices i mean maybe they'll be a little bit more robust you know feature set um but i i think that uh you know pretty much the basics you know for 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 those that um uh have challenges and need to utilize some of these features i think you're going to be good here on the 6a and so again we've got uh we've got security privacy location safety and emergency passwords and accounts digital well-being and parental controls google system about phone and then tips and support and so that is going to be everything that you're going to find under your settings menu now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll pop into these cameras real quick um allow camera to access this device's location precise or approximate no don't need to know where i am okay turned on by default top shot um okay so by default you're on top shot <laughs> okay um so you can see we have a two time zoom and we have the six time uh, ultra wide, which is the 114 degree field of view, which is what you're looking at through the viewfinder. Okay, and that is the standard viewfinder. Uh, I see by default they have a leveler. And so, you know, the phone vibrates, you know, when it gets leveled uh, so that you can take a straight on accurate photo. Uh, we have video. We have the different modes. We have panorama, photosphere, and then lens. Um, pretty thin on the modes. I believe that there's more modes on the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. And so maybe that's another thing too, that if you want more camera modes, then you're gonna have to go with one of those options rather than the 6A here. But I mean, I, th I find it hard to believe that anybody would be disappointed, you know, with the, camp, with the, with the, with the quality output that this device gives. Um, you know, portrait mode, night sight, which is very popular on the Pixel. You know, it takes really good night photography. Um, and then we will back to the camera and go to settings where we have uh, night sight, top shot, auto, timer, and full image. And uh, we got four by three. Well, we have the full image okay so we'll just keep it at four by three by default and um, is that it yeah you can just swipe down from the mid screen and access okay more settings that's what i was looking for all right so we have save location camera sounds google lens suggestions social share with duo messages or youtube we have gestures volume key actions and you can use the volume key for shutter zoom volume or off we'll just keep it at shutter by default for now but i probably will end up changing that um <clears throat> we got device storage advanced if we click on advanced we got show dirty lens warning raw plus jpeg control and then it says you can view the raw folder, store videos efficiently, social media depth features, enable time lapse for astrophotography, and then timer light. Okay, so those are under what you're gonna find under the advanced features for the camera. Now we got composition, we got framing hints, uh, grid type. I like the three by three. Okay, then we have manual controls, white balance, adjust color temperature and then we got exposure adjust brightness and shadows and then for photos we got camera photo resolution full resolution or medium resolution uses less storage we'll keep it on full resolution that's what it's on by default uh, save selfie as previewed yeah I'll turn that on okay and then video we got video stabilization um, reduce camera shake to make video smoother will result in a zoomed in view ah i didn't realize that okay so you will if you want a zoomed out view then you need to turn video stabilization off so as soon as you enable that then it gives you a zoomed in view okay 
So then we have help and feedback, send feedback and help. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Go ahead and just take a quick picture. Check that shutter speed. All right. Shutter speed is nice and quick. Okay. And you can see that's the photo that I took. Crispy photo. That box is as detailed as it can get. I mean, you look at the Pixel 6a writing. I mean, if you can see that in the camera, wow, that that is a very detailed looking photo there. Okay, I'll swing the camera around and take a selfie real quick. Okay, and again, this is an eight megapixel selfie sensor, um, and that's that's really that's that's a good looking photo. Now I was kind of scratching my head at the eight megapixels. I was kind of thinking that that was either going to be, you know, a ten or twelve megapixel sensor, um, but I mean, I, I, the eight megapixels. I mean, it it do the job, you know. Um, I I feel like you know on this particular device, you know, the selfie camera, you know, if 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 the weakest link could even be mentioned in the same conversation with Google, given the fact that it seems like they've just mastered camera tech on their devices, you know, I, obviously, you know, the 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 selfie camera here, um, it, again, it's going to be suitable enough, um, but it seems like it may have uh, it, it could underperform at times, you know. But I know that those rear cameras, you know, those are tried and true. And, um, you know, I have no, no doubts at all that, um, you know, pretty much every photo that I take with those rear cameras, you know, is going to come out solid, you know, is going to come out solid for sure. So, I mean, you know, this is a solid looking, you know, uh, selfie camera here or, or selfie photo, like, you know, color accuracy is on point. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of getting it out into the elements, you know, taking some photos. Um, and then, you know, I will display more of what I was able to capture, both still shot imagery and uh, uh, selfies, you know, um, as the days go on, as I'm putting together the full pristine review. Um, so that said, ladies and gentlemen, I think that that's where I will end this particular uh, first initial thoughts and impressions for the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Um, just off the rip, I mean, I, <laughs> Like I said, I already went and toyed with it down at my local Best Buy, had it in hand, got a feel for it. Um, and so I, I feel like this device is gonna be, you know, really good. I don't think that a lot of the, the trade-offs that Google decided to leave out of this to bring us this, uh, this, 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 this lovely package in a 449.99 price tag, I don't think that those things are, 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 are big deals. You know, I don't think a lot of people are really tripping over high refresh rates or wireless charging or even the cameras like if you know anything about pixel devices you know you know that these cameras are are super on point and have been for a long time and the fact that these are the same cameras that have been in previous pixel devices that have crushed competition i mean how could you feel anything how could you feel any anything you know negative regarding the camera system that is here on the 6a you see um, I mean, so I, I feel as though, you know, there's a, there's a lot to like. I feel like you're getting major bang for your buck. Um, I'm excited to get my main SIM in this device and, uh, you know, get to using it. Um, try out these Pixel A uh, uh, buds, you know, see how they sound, see if I can get a good fit. But like I said, a lot of times those buds that you have to jam down into your ear, they just don't work out for me. I do not like the way that they feel. So, you know, keep it locked at Pristine Mobile Tech. Like I said, maybe I'll do a, a, a giveaway for those Pixel Buds. Um, we'll see, who knows? I may put them in my ear and fall in love with them and like them. And, uh, you know, obviously if I like them, I'm gonna keep them. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen, for the first initial thoughts and impressions for the Google Pixel 6a. If you like this video, Hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. Be sure to hit that notifications bell so that every time my videos drop and go live, you'll get notified and you can be one of the first to check out that content. 
comment section is where I'm always chilling at. So be sure after you watch any of my content, if you've got anything for me, questions, comments, feedback of any kind, hit me in the comment section. My only ask is that we keep it respectful. Okay, I respect your views, you respect my views, and we'll talk about tech respectfully. Manage to do that? All right, simple enough, simple enough. I'm a simple man, not hard to please at all. All right, so thanks for letting me allow, uh, 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 thanks for allowing me, rather, to bend your ear about the Pixel 6a. And, uh, you know, keep it locked for pristine reviews gonna be coming soon. And I've got a plethora of other devices where I've got reviews coming out for them as well. So keep it locked here at Pristine Mobile Tech. You already know, please stay safe, get spiritually fit. We're definitely living in the last days. Think I'm lying? Go pull up the book of Revelations and the Holy Bible, read it, and then talk to me. And tell me that a lot of the stuff that it talks about in Revelations isn't happening before our very eyes every day. It's real. It's a real situation. And God can save you and position you. So get spiritually fit. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.